Hi everyone, this is Jill. Do you wish there was an easier way to get through the hurdles that you have in front of you and get all the things that you're looking for? That's what we'll talk about today. The quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to the commitment to excellence, regardless of their chosen field of endeavor. Vince Lombardi. You know, everything moves so fast in our lives. We're all tired, uncertain of ourselves. We don't even know whether we're getting the things in life that we really want or deserve for the effort that we're putting into them. And it would be nicer to know that when we have these efforts, we're actually going towards the things we want. Today, we're going to talk about the book, High Performance Habits, How Extraordinary People Become That Way by Brendan Burkhardt. A lot of times when we look around us, our lives are inconsistent. Some days we're very happy. Things are wonderful. They're going our way. And then other days, we're just tired. We're not going anywhere. We feel like we're having all sorts of problems. There's so many ups and downs going on in our work lives, in our home lives. And even if we do hit what he calls peak performance once in a while, there's always that drop off on the other side, the ups and the downs. And we wonder if there's anything that we can do to keep growing and reach those goals and those dreams that we have with some skills so that we can gain in our personal lives and our careers. He thinks that years ago, maybe 50 years ago, it was easier for people to navigate the world. There was less distraction. Everything was more straightforward. He says, quote, work hard, play by the rules, keep your head down, don't ask too many questions. Follow the leader is how you got ahead back then. But those rules have changed. Our world is fast paced. And it's not even those types of things that allow you to be consistently ahead or in your peak performance anymore. He even says that the problem is, is that no one really knows the answer. Even our leaders don't know the answer. Our bosses don't know the answer. We try to lead. We try to do our best and find our groove. But unfortunately, things keep changing. And it's harder to nail those things down, even if we do find them. And even if you get an accomplishment or something that you're looking for, you wonder, am I really doing the right thing? Is there something more I should be doing? Or is this the best place I'm going to get? We all have those questions about how our lives are going. So he said that right now, what's not working is the old standards of work hard, be passionate, focus on your strengths, practice a lot, stick to it and be grateful. And he says that these things are useful pieces of advice. They're solid and timeless, he says, but it's not enough to get us where we want to go. But even some people have all these things going for them and they're still not getting what they want to out of life. And so then the question comes in, why do some people or some teams really get ahead and get ahead quickly while other ones just struggle or sustain the successes they had in the past? Or even the people who get what they want in life, how come some are happy and some are just not happy with what they have? But what can get us motivated to reach the higher levels of success so that we can put in place all the things that will help improve us better and keep us at that high level? And so he said it matters what practices we have in our lives and if we're doing them in the right order. If there's anything special about a team It's probably because they figured out which activities and which habits are really the most important and putting them up front. He says that you can do all sorts of things that come in happiness books like starting journals and trying meditation and doing all the things that a lot of places tell you to be happy. Those are the things that are just not going to get you there all the time, even if they do release some of the stress some of the time. So he said that they investigated six deliberate habits to really get the performance and the goals that we want in our life so that we'll be able to strengthen our lives and really enjoy everything around us. He says that if we become high performers, we'll certainly be more successful, we'll be less stressed, and that in general, high performers love challenges. They're more confident that they'll get the things that they really want in their lives, despite whatever adversity they find themselves up against. So the first thing he talks about is taking an assessment. And he has this on his website, highperformanceindicator.com. You can take it, it's free, and you'll get the score about the six categories that you go into. 
But we're going to talk about what he says about those things. So it's helpful, even if you don't take his test. And he says that there's no specific type of person that wins some sort of a magic lottery where you get what you're supposed to get. There's no physical characteristics. There's nothing about the group around you. These habits are about you. And so he says, there's just no more room for excuses. It's time that you actually do the things that you're trying to do. Once you take the test, it will give you those grades on those various levels. And it will tell you some ways that you can go about fixing all of the problems. And if you feel like taking the test, the link is in the show notes. He takes the common quote, rising tide lifts all boats, and says it a different way. One habit lifts all other habits. And that means that as soon as you start getting better at one habit, it helps all the habits. Think about that. If you had more energy, you would be more productive. If you were more productive, you would be more courageous. They all work together in helping you get the things that you want in your life. So as you start tackling some of these, the other ones get much easier. So if you're thinking about these six particular categories, don't worry about it because just working on a few of them will start making all of them better. The first one he talks about is clarity and how can we actually get a better idea of knowing what it is you want. And if you don't know what you want, it's really hard to get. And that becomes a huge problem. I know I had that problem in my 20s, as I mentioned before. I didn't even know what I wanted. And so it gets hard to know when you don't even know. Question is, is can you start to focus and really obsess about the things that you really want to do with your life? Can you know yourself better so that you know what it is you want to do? And that might come in the way of what kind of person you are, what kind of goals you have, what other people around you need. But that clarity can help you with that. He says in this clarity that finding out what kinds of skills you need will help you develop your thoughts in about how to get what it is you're looking for. If you have a goal of becoming a certain type of career or having a certain hobby and you don't know how to do those things, you have a clear indicator about what kind of goals you need to have. If you want to become a famous artist and you don't know how to paint, now you know you need to paint. So he asks you to think about what three skills you're currently working to develop so that you'll be more successful next year or that you should be working on so that you can become more successful. Figure out too, what has meaning in your life. That's on a personal, emotional level. When you find what those things are that you really love and really gets you into those flow states, that's one of those things that's gonna give you that energy, that productivity to do those things. So gaining that clarity will help you right away. The next he talks about E for energy, and that means trying to become vibrant, energetic. It'll help you get the energy you need to do everything on a physical level, on a mental level, on an emotional level. Nothing destroys your efforts more than just being tired. When you're tired, you don't feel like moving. You don't feel like doing anything. It makes you feel depressed. It makes you feel sad about where you are in life. When you're just tired, it's such a low energy state. It almost feels like your goals are so far away that you can't get them. The important thing is to really make sure that you turn around anything that's making you feel tired, that's negative energy, that is physically exhausting you. How can you feel better? And a lot of times those things are activity, exercise, getting out there, doing things, walking in nature. There's all sorts of ways that restore your energy, whether it's mental energy or physical energy. Maybe you wake up and you eat a great breakfast, get a little exercise and go for a walk, hopefully in nature, so that you can actually get more connected with your body and your brain together. But what types of things can you do to really make that energy rise in you instead of slow down? What is it that really charges you up? What is it that really gets you excited to have your day, makes you joyful, makes you happy about your life? One thing I started to do, because it's not really easy for me to go for a walk in the morning, and I mean, it really is, but I don't do it anyway, is I try to get up and exercise a little bit. I have an Oculus Quest and I have some fun exercise games in there. And just do 20 minutes of that in the morning, it wakes me up. I become a lot more excited about my day after playing this very active but very fun game first off in the day. That also means that you're also going to have to look at stress throughout your day. What makes you stressed out? 
What makes you sleepy throughout the day? Are you getting tired? Do you feel like your energy is draining from you in the afternoons? Is it eating the wrong kind of meal? Is it eating too big of a meal? You have to find out what those things are that will help you to feel better. Nutrition, sleep, really work on that. Necessity is one of those things that it's easy to forget because we think it's about other people. My work needs me to do this job. My customers need me to do this job. But you need to raise that internal need for you to get these things done. If you don't care about the project, you won't get it done. Or if you get it done, it won't be right. So that's inside you. Having high expectations of yourself is good for you. A lot of times people just don't expect anything from themselves. They don't challenge themselves. The world is hard and everything's against me. And when you go that direction, it's a really bad mental place to be. It's good to have deadlines and it's good to have this sense that things must get done. And it's great to have goals. Don't get into that mentality where you just let life happen to you. And he says that when we feel like we're underperforming, that we really must watch ourselves frequently. You know, whenever you're starting something new, and I think that's what makes it so hard to start things that are new, is that you're constantly checking yourself. You're constantly looking at how you're doing. Am I doing this right? Am I doing it wrong? Having that dedication to looking at your own performance and seeing what's going right and what's going wrong will help you. He says to increase our productivity, we have to really focus on what he calls the prolific quality output in the area that we're wanting to be known in and really drive our impact. So you have to really, first of all, minimize the distractions around you so that you can focus more on that prolific quality output, meaning the thing that you really want. And he said that the most important thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. And you've heard that quote before. It's a very popular quote, but it's important to understand what the most important things are. Then he says you have to develop influence with people around you because it will help other people see what you're going for, trust that you're able to get those things, and then support you in those things that you want to do. If you don't create a network of people around you, it'll become impossible or it's very hard to get the things you want. Can you help other people? because that'll make the biggest difference to you. And it'll help you feel motivated to do some of the things you're looking to do. Do other people depend on the thing you're trying to get done? If this is your career, are your customers dependent on you working on these projects and getting them done? Is your company needing you to make things happen? As soon as you understand that there are other people in the world who all depend on you to get these things done, it will give you even more reason for you to Bring your best game. And he says that it's important that you demonstrate courage by talking to other people and telling them what you're thinking. And not only that, to move, to act on those things and stand up for your team, for yourself, so that you can face whatever obstacles are coming your way. You can take those down and really reduce the kind of threat they are to your project. And these all work out together because he says that if you don't know what you want, which he calls clarity, And if you're just way too tired to do it anyway, you lack energy. And if you have no sense of pressure or urge to go get what you want, then there's no necessity. If you can't actually produce the things that you want to do because of whatever reason that you can't get there, you lack productivity. If the people around you don't really have faith that you're going to do what you say you're going to do, then you also lack influence. And then if you don't take up risks, you lack the courage. And without those six things, it's going to be devastating to you. When I did take his test, it showed that I had an energy problem, probably because I struggle so much with my sleep and I probably don't exercise to the amount that I should. That was what his website suggested that I really work on. Then the next thing his test showed me is I lack courage. I knew this before. I'm risk adverse. I've said that before. But he points it out in that test that I really need to become stronger and really stand up for the things I believe in. He says that there's some people who struggle with the high performance habits. He calls them dabblers and they have passing interests in the game of life. They look at a lot of things, they try many things, but they never really jump into anything with full engagement or full commitment. 
podcast 37, we talked about people who are good at a lot of things. But this isn't quite what he's talking about. It's not about trying so many things and being excited about so many things. Dabblers are more passive in that. They're not really going after those many things. They just use, I think, these other topics as an excuse for not getting the important things done. Dabbling is really more about the energy level and the avoidance of the important thing than it is about being someone who has multiple skills. He said that there are novices too, and they're interested. They want to learn. And sometimes they even jump in deep. They do better than dabblers in a lot of ways because they want to be better at it. The problem is they're new probably to the company that you're in or the thing that you're working on. They don't really know which way to go. They're struggling because they don't have the knowledge and they can get discouraged very easily. Then there's amateurs. They have passion. They jump in. They're very excited, but they have a lot of obstacles in their way. They're still unskilled. They try to jump in too fast. And maybe they do things that are wrong because they just don't know better. He mentions an article on positive psychology known as flow. And he says you get there when your goals are right in front of you. And they seem like something that you can get, that's something very clear to you. You have a strong connection and the focus that you need to get those particular types of goals. You're doing something that's rewarding because you want to get those things done. You feel personally invested in those things. And so it becomes easier for you to get things done. And that last part about flow, he says that you actually lose your self-consciousness and you feel serenity around you. That's why flow is so amazing, because there's times when you're doing something and you're thinking, I wonder how I'm doing. I wonder if this is the right thing. I wonder if I'm going the wrong way. But when you have flow, you lose all of that. And there's a piece to you because you're doing the right thing. Time stops. So you feel so focused that you actually don't even know what time it is anymore. You feel like you're getting immediate feedback on your performance as you're doing these things and you're getting them done in your project. You realize how well it's going. You can tell almost immediately whether this is the right thing, it's going the right way, or if it's not. There's a balance between your skill level, means you're good at this, and the challenge it presents. It's challenging, but you're capable of doing it. You have a sense of personal control over your outcomes. Do you feel that you can actually make this happen? You stop thinking about your physical needs. I thought this one was funny. If you're someone who ever had flow, and you know that time flies, you stop eating. You maybe realize you haven't taken a sip out of your drink or maybe you haven't stood up in a while. And that's because you're just in that state of flow that you're excited and you just lost all connection with what's going on around you, even to the point where you don't remember to take a sip of water. You're completely focused on what you're doing, that you really have flow about the thing that's most important to you. You're getting rid of all the other obstacles and things that are in your way. Summary, try to find answers to whether or not you have the six skills it takes to be a high performance person by taking the test on his website. Remember, the link is in my show notes. Remember that most of the things in your life don't have to do with your circumstance. Two, look at the high performance habits when it comes to your personal actions. Seek clarity. Know exactly what it is you want. Generate energy. Make sure you're getting the right food, the right exercise, and that you're getting enough sleep at night. Whatever is draining you of your energy, make sure that you stop that and you gain what you need to do in order to power through your day. Raise the necessity inside you. Three, increase the high performance habits that are based on your social activity which means increasing your productivity, working with your team to make sure you get things done, make sure that you're doing the right things, you're keeping the main thing in focus, and you're actually accomplishing things. Develop influence with your team, with your family. That comes along with building trust. And then lastly, demonstrate courage. Be bold and take action. If you don't demonstrate courage, people might fall away from you because they don't trust what you're doing, or they don't think you have what it takes to get it done, or they don't know that you really believe in what you're doing. By being bold, they will know that you're serious. Four, figure out the skills you need in order to get things done. Know what it will take in order to actually increase your productivity, 
know what skills you need in order to get those things done and accomplish your goals. Five, try to avoid the characteristics that he finds that are detrimental to being a high performance person. Don't be a dabbler and just have passing interest and just try this and then try that without really fulfilling the plan that you've decided to fulfill. Don't be a novice where you have interest in the projects, but you really don't know what it is that needs to get done. And so you don't get there. Don't be an amateur where you know some things, but you don't know enough to actually accomplish your goals. Six, understand that as soon as you start getting some of your high performance skills, the others will fall into place. As you gain clarity, you will gain energy. As you gain energy, you'll gain productivity. So don't feel overwhelmed if you're just starting at the beginning. Challenge, try to think of three skills that you need to develop in order to be successful this year. What three things can you learn that ensure that you have high performance? Write those down and start figuring out ways where you could get those skills. Would it be a class? Is there a book with that? Or is there a mentor or someone who could teach you how to gain those skills? Today, our fun entertainment quote comes from the movie Hoosiers with Gene Hackman. There's a um, tradition in tournament play not talk about the next step until you've climbed the one in front of you. I'm sure going to the state finals is beyond your wildest dreams, so let's just keep it right there. Forget about the crowds, the size of the school, their fancy uniforms, and remember what got you here. Focus on the fundamentals that we've gone over time and time again. And most important, don't get caught up thinking about winning or losing this game. If you put your effort and concentration into playing to your potential to be the best that you can be, I don't care what the scoreboard says at the end of the game, in my book, we're going to be winners. Gene Hackman's so great, and he always has such great advice. I think Gene Hackman is one of those guys that could tell you anything and you would believe it's true. What? I should eat more fish? Okay, Gene Hackman, I'll eat more fish. But I'm really glad that Gene Hackman doesn't live anywhere near me because I really don't want to eat more fish. But in general, always listen to what Gene Hackman says in every movie. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. Please stop at my website, smallstepspod.com. Subscribe to the podcast. And if you have any feedback, let me know what it is. If you could write a review, I'd appreciate it too. Have a great week. <laughs>